Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens, and he's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how you doing today, buddy? Doing great, Matt. How about you? I'm doing good, man. Life's good. Life's good. All right, man, we're on episode 138. Are you making these marketing mistakes? Episode 138, are you making these marketing mistakes? And most certainly you are, because most people we come across are, are making these kind of mistakes. I'm guilty. We're guilty. We <laughs> we're all, all guilty. Make, we make these marketing mistakes, that's for sure. Everybody makes a marketing space and they just need little tune-ups, right? It's like, you know, why do you drink water? Why do you drink coffee? Because, you know, you ran out. <laughs> you got to fill it back up. So this is just more like a reminder. Some of the some of the biggest mistakes that you might be making. I want to start off with talking about, we've talked about this before, but we talked about uh, fail to get professional help. And, and why do you get professional help, especially when it comes to marketing? Because if not, you're going to just default to price, right? You're just going to say, without professional help, you're going to compete on price. You're going to be desperate for more leads, more opportunities. You're going to get poor response from your marketing because it's not done by a professional. You're going to get poor conversion rates because whatever you are getting probably aren't qualified prospects, right? Um, and you're, then your sales will lag and be sluggish and you won't have any cash. Yeah, you know, um, on this very same uh, subject, so I was doing a copywriting critique for someone this past week. And um, when I looked at their, the copywriting was okay at best, but they were seeking my help. So I don't want to knock right, that. Right. Where, but they already had a website up and I could tell they built it themselves. And I was like, can you move this? And he goes, well, I was having trouble getting it. I'm like, that's why you need to hire somebody who specializes in WordPress or whatever you're using because the professional look, what it makes you, it makes you look professional. And so we often, it, it comes back to the, the who, not how, you know, in, uh, and I, again, we, I brought this up a few weeks ago. You take Russell Brunson. He said, I have no idea how to make software and do all this stuff when he was starting Edison, his company, but Yet he found the people. And that's why if you when when you when you fail to get professional help, you look unprofessional. That's just the only way to say it. I, I guess I guess this is the easiest way to say it. If you look unprofessional. Yeah. And, and, well, and mine goes back specifically on marketing. You just you just fail to differentiate yourself and you just start falling back to the defaults, so, you know, competing on price, trying desperate for leads and all that kind of stuff. All right. And then we talk about um they're really, the, there's threefold purpose of marketing, right? Marketing has three main purposes. You want to capture the attention of your target market, right? And so we'll even say that first. Do you even know your target market, right? Who am I trying to capture the attention, who, attention of? Who's my ideal client? Right, we got we to gotta capture their attention, right? You got to give them hope that your marketing will give them enough information to help them make decisions. We've talked about that before, the buyer's journey, right? And then the third thing would be, um, you want to lower the risk for them to take the next step, right? We've talked about the buyer's journey, which is when you're looking for something, I always use my car example. I don't call a car dealer up and say, hey, I'm thinking of buying a new car. What do you think I should get, right? We all start our buyer's journey doing some research and asking your friends and looking on the internet what type of cars and you want a sedan, do you want a SUV, do you want electric you want gas, you want a hybrid, and then you narrow it down to maybe three or four, and then you start doing more and more research. So the car dealers that can help us make the decisions, the best sedans, the best five hybrids, the best five SUVs, you're helping me on my journey, which then leads me more prone to using you when I make my decision, decide on. It, it's funny when you say that, um, but most like the, the purpose of marketing is actually to not allow you to make that decision. The purpose of marketing is if you're the target audience is to take you to the decision that the marketer wants you to make and think that it's your own decision. For instance, um, there are all these people who buy hybrid cars nowadays, okay? They think it's their idea, but it's been planted in them, planted in them, please, I can't say it any other way, as a seed that you will be this, you'll be more green, you'll be this, you know, you'll be environmentally sound, you'll be all these things if you buy a hybrid. So you think it's your idea to buy the hybrid car or, you, well, and, and maybe you buy the hybrid Lexus because you have a 
different echelon of thought and all the things they make you think, but no matter what, or you buy the, the uh, uh, Elon Musk car, uh, Tesla, you know, it's all of those things, but you think it's your own idea, but great marketing takes you, the targeted audience, to a conclusion that they want you to have. So great marketing makes your sales process so much easier. It takes so much easier. Yeah, it makes it a no-brainer. Out of the process. Yeah, yeah makes yeah, it, we're it a no-brainer. No -brainer. How can we make it to where it's, where it's a no-brainer, lower the risk for, for you to do business with me? Uh, most business owners then kind of default to a tactical approach versus a strategic approach. And what do we mean by that is a tactical is, hey, I need to run some ads on Facebook. I need to do my Google SEO search. I need to put an ad in a local paper, right? That's a tactical. tactical. The, the strategic is what you say in your marketing and how you say it is more important than, than where it's said, right? And we've talked about that as a million, your million dollar position, your million dollar uh, marketing position, right? Your and million dollar marketing message, MDM, sorry. So um, Mike Lindell, my pillow. okay? I want to use this, it's a great yeah. example. Right now it's current events. So he's doing this symposium on, okay. So he chose his target audience is typically conservatives and he chose this target audience. But because he chose this target audience, he lost a lot of advertisers, lots of advertisers. He got taken off of certain platforms. I mean, he lost a lot of his business. So he does this giant symposium, which is about the election. I'm not going to go into any of that, but he does this huge three-day symposium. It's going on right now. And, but he's advertising my pillow and I could lose my company if you guys, you know, so use this special code. He's probably making a hundred million dollars off this. But <laughs> what I'm saying is he's completely segmented himself away from half the population. So, you know, there's always that thought that, well, I don't want to scare off certain customers. You right. can choose an audience and it's okay. It, it causes a division, but he, what is his strategy is, okay, I am going to segment. And then I'm going to go on with this segment who believes what I believe. See, he's really siding with them. This is the buyer's journey. And right. then he puts his message in front of them and many will not go for the message, but many will enough will that it's going to make him lots of money. That's the strategy. The tactic was putting up the three day symposium. That's you see that that's right. the difference. How are we going to do it? Yeah. You see commercials all the time. I hear that, uh, especially on the radio, I hear these commercials all the time. And we talk about the platitudes, but they it's an air conditioning contractor that talks about how long they've been in business, family business, they got dogs, whatever. I mean, none of that matters. Um, how are you going to get my house cold? Um, there is there is one right now that's actually pretty good. We don't charge over, we never charge overtime on weekends or nights, evening. I mean, that's a major benefit to the customer because my air conditioner is broke, but I can't miss work. So you can see the benefit in there. And um, anyway, but. Well, this comes back to the million dollar message, right? The whole point of this is strategic is the basics. It's the fundamentals, which you and I talk about all the time. You need a target market. Who's your target market? So that way, you know, how do I formulate a million dollar message to those same people? And then I make an irresistible offer that makes it a no brainer to do business with right? That's the fundamental. That's strategic. Then we can run those ads on Facebook and on Google and, and postcard campaigns. But that Radio, message- television, the, whatever you want. Yeah. You got to have your target market, your million dollar message, and your irresistible offer all lined up before you do any advertising. The mistakes people do is they, they run a Facebook ad and then they complain that Facebook ads don't work. And it wasn't the Facebook ad didn't work. It was that your messaging didn't work. Your million dollar message didn't work, or you were going after the wrong target market, or you didn't have an irresistible offer. That's the problem. It wasn't that Facebook didn't work. It's that your ad didn't work because you didn't have the fundamentals. So when you, we talk to small business owners and they say, oh, I tried Facebook. It didn't work. I tried Google SEO. It doesn't work, right? I tried mailers. They don't work. Well, again, that was a tactic. You probably didn't have the strategy or the fundamentals down target market, million dollar message, irresistible offer. That's probably what was wrong. Not the medium that you used to run the ads, right? Yeah, and, and that's what you get into, right? Well, you were already saying that most business owners rely on the platitudes. We've got the lowest prices, the best service, family owned and operated. We offer convenient hours. We offer great value, right? If you don't have a million dollar message, you're gonna just fall into the trap, the default of we've got the cheapest prices, we're family owned or friendly, which everybody can say. That's what we mean by platitudes. There's, there's no value there. There's no distinction. I don't know who you are. How are you different than the other 
landscaping, the other H HVAC guys, right? You just fall back into the platitudes. Well, um, and on that, on that thought, so if you're like trying to figure out, well, what is my million dollar message? Well, first figure out the problem you solve for your offer. This is part of the million dollar message. We talk about this in other episodes. And what's the solution to the, that problem is, is ideally your, but it's what problem are you solving for them? And if the better you describe, when I say them, your ideal prospect, the better you describe that transformation of what they're in now to what they're going to have when they're buy your product, that, that transformation, the better you describe that. So you got a problem, you describe a solution, and then you describe the transformation. That's what they care about. They don't care. They know they have the problem once you explain it. What they care about is that transformation. Then you can make some kind of offer. Like, hey, I'll help you fix that. Call us and we'll, you know, whatever, your first no service charge. You could have a lot of different things. But to simplify marketing, a million-dollar message, it's problem, solution, transformation, offer. That's as, about as simple as you can get. I love that. That, that is awesome. And, and, that, and that's perfect. Because then when you can communicate the true value that your business offers, then you're doing, you're not competing on price anymore, right? Because you're talking about the value we provide, right? Um we talked about, you, conversion talked about that under cash flow too. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that cash flow. We talked if about you're competing on price, you're affecting your cash flow. Yeah, exactly right. But it was great. It's, I'm working with uh, a bunch of dentists right now. And, and, and so part of that is going, has turned into this was, I got this idea from another uh, advisor who's working with uh, business owners, particular, uh, I think they're ophthalmologists, let's call them. I can't remember what they are. But the idea was do you know what your business is worth? Most people don't know what their business is worth. There's kind of the interrupt. You know, I say interrupt, engage, educate, and offer. Do you know what your business is worth? Do you know what your retirement plan is worth? Your 401k, your IRA. Most people might have an idea of that. And then the, 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 the interrupt, engage, and then the educate as well. You know, the business is probably your biggest retirement asset, even more important than your IRA or your 401k. Shouldn't you know the value of your business, right? And here's the irresistible offer would be, we'll do a, let's call it a practice assessment, a business assessment to help you determine the value of your business today. And then we'll put together a scorecard of eight different categories and how you rate kind of A, B, C, D, F. So you'll know how you can improve the value of your practice, right? And so that becomes an irresistible offer, which you, know, you lead into, hey, how about a practice valuation and a scorecard? And so then at the end, which is really funny, so, so then you, that's interesting. You've educated them. Yeah, I'd like to know how much my business is worth. Yes, I'd like to know how I score or rate versus my peers in these eight categories. And then, of course, nobody likes to have a bad grade, right? Nobody wants to have a C or an F, right, which, which we come across all the time in these practices. And then your pitch, here's your irresistible offer. You want me to help you fix those, right? <laughs> because if you fix those, then you increase the value of your business, which then increases the value of your, basically your retirement plan. Yeah, and I so. think, you know, two of the things here, we, 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 we breeze by them, but if you can figure out your target audience and get a million dollar message, you'll change your business. I mean, change the business. I mean, that's the difference between a half a million dollar business and a million dollar business. A half a million dollar business is a business where you do most of the work. A million dollar business is where your message, your marketing message does a lot of the work. And well, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, so if you get this right, these fundamentals, they will instantly make your phone ring, position your business as the dominant force in your market, provides basically the, the whole foundation for you to generate the cash flow, immediate cash flow that you need, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's really kind of neat. So, so before we sum back up, I know we're, we're kind of earlier, but I wanted to go through a couple of LinkedIn emails. So I was going to say, we could do this on a whole episode. But it was interesting that I had this email that I got from LinkedIn, you know, people sending you direct messages, you know, and, and some of them you, are, are awful. So, um, well, okay. So here's the awful one, right? So from my mailbox, it's, it, it, I'm not going to mention names or whatever, but I get, you know, we're connected on LinkedIn. I forget how we connect. It might've reached out or I might've reached out or she might've reached out. And then here's the email. Uh, our business helps blank industry, I'm just, hell, you know, uh, chiropractors, whatever their industry is, I'm not going to give it away. Uh, hey, our business helps, I'm just going to say chiropractors, gain more visibility, on, visibility online. We've been in business for 13 years. 
and we work only in the chiropractic industry. Okay, at any time, did you tell me what's in it for me, right? Did you interrupt, engage, educate? All you said was me, 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 platitude. We've been in business for 13 years. We help chiropractors. Help us do what? You didn't even tell me what it did. My response, More visibility, what the hell is that? My response to, to emails or LinkedIn messages like that, I'm like, if you really were good at what you do, you would not be cold calling me through LinkedIn. Because the people well, I disagree through, because you're a copywriter. If she had a good copywriter, she'd probably generate some middle leads. Well, that's my point is you you um, you would be the difference would be you wouldn't be cold calling, you'd actually be writing blog posts and I'd be coming to you, or you'd be writing uh, information okay. that appeals to me in the audience, or you'd be advertising and attracting me to you. The difference <laughs> between um, I think that's what we're talking about here. The difference, yeah, yeah, yeah. the difference is attracting your audience instead of going to get your audience. Because if you have to go to get your audience, then you're in a position where you have to sell to your audience. And when you have to sell, then you're kind of forced into that pricing game. Whereas if the audience comes to you and says, I volunteer, I, I'd, like, I'd like that. Um, well, then they're not all, typically as concerned about the price. They want the solution that they know you all have. Um, yeah, and, and you're exactly right. Here's another, here's a better example. Okay. And, and, and this one I can say, I'm not going to say the person's name, but, but I'm talking about financial advisors because I work with financial advisors. Um, this one was another LinkedIn message. I was just checking your profile and noticed that you're an advisor. Okay. You made a little connection. That's good. Right. I wanted to let you know that, that, so, so this is where they get out of whack, right? They interrupt, engage, educate and offer, or as you said, you know, here's the problem. We've got the solution, irritate it. And then the solution and, and you're, Right. All they did is say, hey, we're, we're offering guaranteed uh, uh, advisor appointments and you don't pay unless it's a uh, unless you get a result. We partner with the top notch lawyers in every state. Uh, these clients need financial planning. They're high quality leads. The system has taken years to build and perfect. Plus, if you don't get 10 appointments per month and you don't pay. Okay, so, right. so it has some elements, but but it's missing a lot. That's all right. Let's just saying. tweak that a bit. So let's say they came to you and said same thing. They made the connection. Yeah, we were financial advisors. Okay, it made it made maybe a little bit of a rapport connection, if you will. Yeah. The next thing is we found a unique way to attract lawyers in your segment. Um, if that's of interest to you, click here, yes. and I'll give you a I'll give you a uh, lead. I'll give you you know I'll give you a. a well, let's let's back up. Let's back up and say, what problem are they trying to solve? A financial advisor who wants leads. Hey, are you looking for more leads in your business? Hey, would you like 10 guaranteed leads a month? Hey, are you struggling to get leads? Isn't it frustrating to, to, to not get leads, to, to not be able to help as many people as you can? They're lacking that, that interrupt and that engage portion, right? They're they're coming to me with a solution before they even are positive that I have the problem. And they, right. they salute, yeah, the solution, I mean, and they're assuming that you work with attorneys. Um, what they're trying to do is high value clients, but I mean, that's okay because what they're doing is by saying attorneys, they're, they're saying, is this your target audience? So they're at least doing some things right, but just a few tweaks could make that message. Just a few better. tweaks, right? You, you would need to say, what's the problem? Are you having trouble getting in, uh, getting in front of uh, high valued clients. That would be your problem, right? Your interrupt, hey, isn't it frustrating knowing that you could help more people if you could just get in front of them, right? Then you could educate them. Hey, we've got, uh, you know, we've teamed up with lawyers in your area that look, and, and because they come from lawyers or high quality leads, and then the irresistible offer is, they go right into it, uh, click to book, book an appointment. You know, we're trying to get, they could have done the lead magnet, like you and I would say, what's an easier step? Hey, Here's a white paper on our process and why our process, you know, can solve your problem, right? That would be a much easier pitch, right? Yeah, because right. What, so, the, what the lead magnet does is it's that interim that creates rapport, continues tells the them education. the whole story. Now they have yes. the story, then backstory and all that. And then now it's like, it's you, now when they call you or sign up for that appointment, they're really already educated to the point, like, like you said, Joe Polish. I mean, he, he, you want to get the people to the point where they finally call you, they're, they're, they're buyers. They're ready to go. Yeah. So she's got, you know, elements of it, right? She's got elements of it, but because she doesn't have the conversion equation or the, or the, the proper order of it, you know, interrupt, engage, educate, and offer. What's yours again? Tell me yours again, quick. Well, I, I just, I mean, basically I just, I simplified that. I just said, you okay. got a problem. That's the interrupt. Okay. Yep. The, the, and the solution, you got to have a solution, which is in the education portion. 
uh, and, and describe the transformation. The engage is just, I'm here talking to you. That's the engage. Um, and then you end with an offer. We're taking the same thing. The interrupt has got to be that opening line. It's got to be what problem do you have, right? Yeah. It's got to be, uh, here's a, do you have this problem? Are you frustrated because of this problem? You know, we encounter, we can talk about art. We encounter, you know, are you a business owner frustrated that you're not to have the business of your dream? Are you frustrated or irritated that you don't make as much money as you think you should? Are, are you are you making these marketing mistakes? Are you making these marketing mistakes? There's an interrupt. The title the title of this 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 show it's it's the interrupt to say oh yeah, well am I I mean and you have to answer those questions and if you are then at the end of the show we give you an opportunity to to fix those marketing mistakes. Um, yeah, exactly right. Our interrupt would be the title. Are you making these marketing mistakes? The educate. Uh, the, the, the engage and educate would be, here are the mistakes we're seeing, here's what most people default to, and here's a solution if you start to follow the conversion equation and start to tweak your messaging, when, and you start with the fundamentals, you start with the strategic fundamentals of who's your target market, what's your million dollar message, and what's your irresistible offer, then you can spread that message throughout mediums, Facebook Google postcard ads, right? And then our irresistible offer, we always talk about it, right? Our two irresistible offers are our mastermind, right? Matt at ProfBuddyMD.com. Come join our mastermind. This is the kind of stuff we do for clients. This is the kind of stuff we do for our group. This is what we do. Help them determine who their target market is, who their million dollar message, I'm sorry, what their million dollar message is, and who their, uh, what's their irresistible offer, right? Help you get that in order and then help you run the Facebook ads or the Google or the postcard strategies. But you got to have the fundamentals before we start generating more leads. So our irresistible offer, Come join our group. That's what we do. That's what we talk about, right? Our second irresistible offer is, hey, we can find any business owner $50,000, $75,000, $100,000 in uh, without spending a dollar more in advertising or marketing. How do we do this? We have a 40-step process that we go through. All these checklists that we talk about during these podcasts, these are the things we're going to ask you. Oh, are you making these marketing mistakes? I bet if you fix one of these marketing mistakes, it might generate a bunch of cash for you, wouldn't it? If you had a million dollar message, if you had a target market, if you had an irresistible offer, what would that do to your business? Yeah. How much would that increase your revenues? How would that increase your profit, right? This is what we do. That's the profit acceleration session. If you want one of those, Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com, Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com. This is, we are following the exact example, right? The interrupt, hey, are you making these marketing mistakes? The engage, hey, most people don't know the fun, the, 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 uh, don't know the fundamentals required to successfully market your business. Most business owners don't know the fundamentals, right? And now we educate. Here's what happens. If you don't have professional help, you're falling back into competing on price, right? The purpose of marketing is to educate them and help them along their buyer's journey so they come to you ready to make a purchase, right? Quit following tactics like running Facebook ads and tell me they don't work and doing Google SEO and tell me that doesn't work when you haven't done the fundamental, the strategic stuff. That's right. Who's your target market? What's your million dollar message? And what's your irresistible offer? Once you fix that, the floodgates open up. That's our education. What's our irresistible offer? Come join our group, right? What's our second irresistible offer? Come do a profit acceleration session. We'll find you 50, 75, $100,000 without spending a dollar more in advertising and marketing. But what's the real goal? The real goal is so you can have, make more money, have more yeah. time off, pay less tax, yeah. And, you know, and have a, have a business. Build the business of your dream. I mean, really. I mean, that's the real goal. And that's, that's what the real goal. You know, it's, it's, these are, again, this is a strategy to, to put you on that path. And it's a lifelong strategy. I mean, you know, I've been in business, I've been in business 30 some odd years and, and the, you go through cycles in business and those cycles happen because of economies and different things. But Ultimately, when you want to get back to the grassroots, it's right here. It's it's right in what we're talking about, you know. And and you get these right, you can grow in any economy. Um, you can choose your audience. That's what I mean. Ultimately, when you get too wide in an audience, then you then you're going to dilute your your message, and it's going to end up bringing your price down. And you want to get the highest price possible for what you do. If if you don't give a customer something to compare it to. Right. If you don't tell me the value that you're bringing me, my default is by price. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you don't give me a choice in cars, all the cars will look the same and all be the same price. Right. But but that's what they're trying to do in cars. We got the Honda Accord and the Toyota Camry look a lot alike 
to me, but there are different options in there. One's somebody likes better than the other. My mother likes the Accord. My dad likes the uh, Camry just for their own whatever, their own features or benefits or the value that it brings to them. The seat's more comfortable for my dad. The, the, the ride is more smooth for my mother. You know, whatever when in reality, are. When in reality, it's the marketing of either company right, that does a right. better job. Right, that, and that's what I'm saying. That's why it matters. That's how you differentiate yourself and, you're, and you get premium prices on the Honda Accord or premium prices on the, on the Toyota Camry when somebody can buy something else very generic. We don't buy generic. We are a marketing society. Like you said, the marketers, if you're not making your own decision, the marketers are making it for you, right? Use this knowledge and follow the formula and start opening the floodgates. That's, we, we said a lot today. It's a good show, I think. <laughs> that was really good stuff. Call us, uh, Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com, David at ProfitabilityMD.com. Our YouTube channel, ProfitabilityMD podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. Always good stuff, Dave. All right, Matt. We'll talk soon. See you. All right, bye.